Hello, welcome back to 1001 Beers, you must travel before you die. I'm here on my own for a beer review. Uh, it's horrible outside, it's grey and it's raining, so I'm going to review a bit, so cheer me up. Um, this one is an interesting one, it's got a really chequered past, the brewery has anyway. Um, it's first brewed in 1956, it's from Belgium, it's 8%, and it is Leafman's Gudenband. Um, nice bottle, looks really classy. Uh, brown bottle, I can't tell what's inside. Um, it is, I think it's a sour beer, let's have a look. Sour beer gets better with age. This is the 2017 blended version, I'll tell you a bit about it. So, Leafman's, um, as a brewery, go back to, to 1679, uh, So, but it, since, the, since the Second World War, the brewery has seven own, several owners. It was owned by Vaux, the Sunderland brewery, who made Double Maxim, which we already reviewed. Then it was some investment company, and then 1990, the Reva Brewing Company uh, took it on. And then in 2008, Duvel... Sorry, Double Mortgat bought it off of that. And all they did, they reduced the number of beers. All they wanted was the Leafman's beers. Uh, they reduced the number of beers to four. And this is one that is left. Um, <clears throat> so, what it says about this one? It says, uh, Gudenband uses several pale and dark malts. Uh, lager for a year before being blended with a younger beer to restart fermentation. Then makes for a classic example of... Flemish blended beer. Interesting. So it's meant to be, it says, given a keeping date of 10 years. I'm, this one's a year old, so um, giving it a go. It says, tasting notes, roasted and sweet notes on the nose, a hint of earthy mushroom. Okay, interesting mushroom. Uh, that'll be probably the lambic side of it. Good and bad. It's pretty complex, young. It has sweet, sourish, and roasted bitter notes. Okay, so that's what I can expect. It's still quite a young one. Uh, I've talked a bit about the... The design is very, very nice, simple, class design. It's Leafman's Craft Blenders, Good and Band Blending 2017. Sour beer gets better with age. Uh, it says cherries, it says blended by the Leafman's Master Blender. Cherries and malt to continue. Ah, sorry, this starts down here in English. It says historically known as Provision Ale, Good and Band is superb for further home cellaring. Allowing the taste and aromas of caramel, apple, wood, cherries, and what malt to continue to evolve. A delectable treat for the beer connoisseur. Well, I'm going to drink it now. I'm going to drink it young. I've got a nice uh, goblet glass here. Absolutely nothing in the bottom, so it's not actually lambic after all, because it's not um, got any yeast in the bottom. So, look at that. It's kind of like a ready brownie uh, coloured beer with this kind of good, kind of very, very light brown heads, some large bubbles in it, some more bubbles around the side. Uh, it's very good in terms of clinging to the glass. That's nice. Let's go for the smell. Okay, so... Sort of sweet and sour, almost, uh, like it says. Roasted bitter notes. Hard to tell what it's going to be like. It's ba basically, I think it's going to taste like a kind of slightly sweet sour beer. So, uh, but maybe fruity? We'll see. Right, let's go for the taste. Cheers. Okay, so it's not really that sweet. Uh, it's quite sour, in fact. Um, fruit flavours, not that much. It's almost like a really, really baby version of, of like a um, Duchesse uh, de Bouillon um, or um, Grand Cru, uh, running back Grand Cru. Um, not like a proper baby version though. It's nowhere near as sour. No hint of vinegar in it at all. I mean, a very, very small amount. Basically you get it's kind of slightly sweet sour note as you initially drink it and it rounds out into quite a smooth not very complex aftertaste so i can see why this is one that's cellar you can leave it to cellar for quite a while i've got a picture of a load of bottles here that are still cellaring clearly because they look a bit dusty um that is not bad actually 
Don't think I've had a beer quite like it. I expect it to be a lot more powerful in taste. But it's actually quite light, quite delicate. Um, didn't get any earthy mushroom, uh, which I'm quite pleased about, to be honest. Um, but it's good. I quite like it. I'd have it again. Uh, I think I'd think if I got a bottle again, I'd leave it to sell it for a bit longer. Probably wouldn't drink it. I mean, I'm going to say this one is a year old, so uh, I have left it for at least one year, and it can pick up to ten. But maybe if I did up to five next time, that'd be quite nice. Or eight. Um, not bad at all, considering it's now made by a, a you know, a double is now a a mass mass producer of beer in uh, Belgium. Um, they, you know, it's not, it's not one that's, it's no longer like a Trappist or anything like that. So uh, it's interesting, a nice 330 ml bottle. Um, love the design, taste is pretty decent. Tastes a bit and it smells. I was afraid it's gonna, with the smell I thought it was gonna be incredibly sour, but it's not, it's really light. I recommend this highly, actually. If you want, if you want like a, something that's an introduction to like a sour beer and you like kind of, Slightly malt, slightly sweet. It's worth having a go at if you don't want to go full on, full on sour. I mean, although it hasn't, I mean, it's not like a Gers. It's nowhere near a Gers. It doesn't, you know, it's nowhere touching even now. Um, it's much more earthy in terms of its taste. It's not light, not really hoppy. It's more malty and hoppy. Uh, pretty good, I would say. I mean, it usually comes wrapped in tissue paper. So this one, which, uh, which apparently it says, uh, the famous paper wrappers and they had pyjamas but this one hadn't had none it just came as a bottle um, I bought this online I think I bought it at Beers of Europe so that's that put that there uh, and I go away and I'm going to enjoy the rest of this beer and I'll see you for another beer review soon goodbye